This video is going to cover the repair of some wet wood rot on my back French door. Uh, this is my very first attempt at creating a video, so I'm apologizing in advance for the quality of the video. It starts off a little rough. Uh, I have those black bars on the side that I haven't figured out how to remove, but it gets a little better as we go because I've been researching and trying to figure out how to edit. Um, I did put some timestamps in, so you'll be thankful for that, so you can kind of move along to the parts that interest you. I tend to get a little chatty. Um, oh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and click the notification bell because I will be following up with some more um, repairs that I got planned. So I hope you enjoy. If not, maybe you'll just find it entertaining. So I am attempting to repair some wood rot in my door. I figured there's got to be uh, people like me and uh, figured I'd give it a shot. If it works out, I'll share it. So first thing I did was um, try to pull away as much of the wet rotten wood. I sprayed it. I heard all kinds of advice on what to use bleach and things. One of the suggestions was not to use bleach but to use hydrogen peroxide or um, vinegar. And I think it had something to do with bleach just um, will kill the live fungus, not the spores. Anyway, I, I went with the peroxide. So sprayed that in there pretty good, but was afraid that um, my next step I couldn't do until the wood was dry. So I've got a fan blowing on it, drying it out now. Okie doke, we are ready for the next step. Um, I'm going to fill this empty gap in with great stuff. It um, is used to fill in gaps and cracks, and the way I understand it, it's going to foam up. Uh, I'm going to, it's going to end up over time, while it's curing or drying, it's going to get real fluffy here and fill in all the spaces. All right, here goes nothing. So I'm just kind of getting in little cracks. So the idea is really just to kind of fill in some of the space and then I'm going to come back, shave off, and make it kind of flat and then I'm going to go over it with a um, kind of a wood filler type stuff. But you don't want to put so much wood filler in this whole big space. So this is just kind of a way to kind of fill in that hollow spot and they say you can wad up foil or you can use like even painters tape wad it up but I don't know I thought this was kind of cool I wanted to try it so we'll see okay good morning everybody I am out ready to try to tackle the door I've gathered a few things uh, that I think I'll need got the extension cord because I am going to need to um, sand. A couple of serrated knives. They um, are going to be used to cut off that extra foam. Gloves. I did not wear gloves yesterday and I used the foam. You should have gloves on. Um, I did get a little on my hand but I was able to use nail polish remover. Um, it's got acetone in it and it took it right off but do wear gloves when you use that stuff. A uh, paper towel just uh, in case I need it there. A sanding block. Um, couple of different kinds of um, spatulas to um, even out the Durham's putty. Here's the putty by the way. Bowls to mix it up in and some water. Alrighty, so um, this is the foam. I came out and checked on it last night. It looked like a little caterpillar or worm or something crawling out of my door so I decided to put a face on it. Kind of a dork I know but you know that's what you're dealing with here. All right, time to shave off the extra foam. And um, I need to try to get it down below the level of the door here because I need to have enough space for the putty to go in after. So I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of shaving it, I guess, off. I've got this, I think they call this a five-in-one tool. Um, it's got kind of like a little bit of a sharper edge here. So I'm gonna use it to kind of see if I can scrape this off how that goes. It's kind of chewy texture. Eh, not liking that too much. Um, 
I'll try one of these knives here. Ooh, that goes, that's going nice. Funny story about my bread knife. By the way, this is a bread knife. You can tell by the serrations on here. Um, I'm making a point of saying this because my kids, they, they give me a really tough time about this. Apparently, somewhere along the line, uh, as they were growing up, I went uh, berserk <laughs> over them using the wrong knife. I don't know. I don't really remember this particular incident, but trust me, they don't ever let me live it down. Whatever. Uh, anyway, they would absolutely go nuts if they saw me doing this right now. But it's working great. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would say I might just be able to save my little uh, caterpillar here, too. I think I am. Look at this. <laughs> Looky there. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's a little thing. What are you going to do? Okay. Um, let's see. Well, actually, it is pretty pretty uh, low to the surface. I think I'm going to just kind of chisel away at it, though, to kind of uh, make sure I have space for that putty. This is just a steak knife, if you haven't been able to tell. Look, um, I'm just kind of throwing this whole video thing together. I think I kind of want to post this because um, without getting too personal, but uh, I'm a single woman and have lived in my house for about 20 years and there's a lot of little things that need to be done around here. and. The problem for me is that I can't find anybody to do the work. Um, if I do find someone, they want to charge an arm and a leg. When I have hired people, sometimes the work is really pretty subpar. Not that my work is going to be terrific, but at least I won't feel too much like I'm getting ripped off. Um, you know, I'm giving it a shot. If it doesn't work, then I can call in a professional. But I think if you're like me, you're finding that finding professionals right now is really hard. Um, I'm a teacher and I am off during the summer and this is the time I have to try to make any improvements because once the school year starts, I have no time. I have watched, oh my God, hours and hours and hours of YouTube videos to learn how to do these things. Um, and I figured I'm just gonna post myself doing them because if you're like me, you watch these videos and you're a little intimidated and you're not really sure what to do. So I'm just gonna video myself doing them to kind of hopefully encourage you to give it a try. You can't hurt too much other than electrical stuff. We'll talk about that one later. I had an issue <laughs> on one of my other projects. Remember, I'm no expert here. I've actually just Velcroed my phone to a stand right now. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, there it is shaved off. You can see I've got some space down here. Uh, it's lower than the door uh, level so that the putty will stick. Alrighty, this is the, I think I'm videoing, this is the <laughs> Durham's uh, Rock Hard uh, water putty. So uh, the instructions on the back say that you should use it about three to one, um, three parts powder to one part water. It should be kind of thick. The other thing that I thought was pretty cool about it is that it says it hardens really fast, but if you want to slow down that dry time you, or hardening time, you can use vinegar. Um, I don't have any white vinegar in the house. I have some apple cider vinegar and I thought, eh, I'm not sure I want to use that. So I'm going to try to get this laid in there pretty quickly. The On the back it lists its uses and it says indispensable to woodworkers, electricians, carpenters, repairmen, housewives. Housewives. <laughs> I just thought that was a little... Um, funny housewives uh, okay anyway I'm gonna use my five-in-one tool to open this and pry it open I don't know if you guys can see much of this sorry again I'm not a, a videographer God only knows if I'm gonna be able to get this from my phone into a YouTube video or not we'll see if not oh well okay so I found this is a little protein powder scoop I'm gonna use, so I have my measurements somewhat accurate. They don't have to be completely perfect. Uh, gosh, I don't know how much I'm gonna need. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the three to one ratio thing. I think that's what it said, right? That's a lot. Um, yeah, three parts powder to one part water. Well, that's an all, uh, I'm gonna do it, all right. 
three parts powder one part water gosh once I get this going that's it though isn't it oh this is good I didn't bring my stir stick all right I'll use the other end of this <laughs> ah, criminy. oh it's pretty darn thick I don't know if you guys can see this. I meant to, <laughs> I meant to bring uh, my paint stick to stir it. I guess I can use a spatula. This is kind of gross. All right, so I have a plastic spatula here. I'm mixing. That's better. I can make it into a putty. Well, I guess this turned out to be about the right amount. The powder looked like an awful lot, but once you put the water in it, really shrunk it up some. All right, so my dog Frida is sniffing all around back there. I hope the camera doesn't fall. You see, I kind of trimmed around the edges there just to uh, make sure there's a place for the putty to kind of grab into there. All right, here goes nothing. This is the consistency, by the way. It's kind of, gosh, what does that look like? Kind of a thick cake batter. All right, let me get some on my spatula here and just start kind of laying it in, pushing it in. Now I'm gonna end up with more on the outsides, and then I'm gonna try to scrape down a bunch of it. And in the end, I'm going to sand it, so. Not too, too worried about it being lumpy yet. It'll smooth out. I just, my main goal is to just kind of push it in there. And all of this on the outside, I'm going to try to sand. Whoopsie. And even up. And then, of course, I'll be painting all of this. Now, this is where it's going to get kind of funky, is around this jam here in the molding. That might not look real pretty. Is doing this and talking is probably not the best idea since I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to put a second coat in here, a layer, because it's requiring a lot. I forget what they call it. There's a term I learned. Let me think. Proud, that's a term I learned watching my YouTube videos. They say when you make it proud, that means you're gonna have a higher level, it's gonna stand up um, higher than the level of the surface that you're trying to fill. So they would say, um, put it in and, I think I'm using this right, put it in and using it proud, or making it proud. So when you hear the term proud, that's what they mean. You're putting in more than what's needed to fill the spot and it's gonna rise above it. So, that looks pretty good. I don't know if I want to put more on or not, but I'm just going to keep playing. So the water putty, they call it water putty, uh, it has dried. I'm going to be sanding it and the rest of the door today. I'm going to be preparing it to paint. So I wanted to, there we go, show you um, what I'll be using. This is the detail sander they're called it's called because it has a little pointy nose there um, uh, some people call it a mouse sander as well I have on it 80 grit paper this is a 120 grit here the lower the number the more coarse the grit so I'm going to be starting off with an 80 then finishing up with a 120 to kind of smooth things out I am going to turn off the sound if I can figure that out um, because I'm sure this is going to be noisy slow going here um, you can see that in the corner there's a lot of detail that needs to happen uh, to try to make the molding look right I'm not really getting too far with my 
detail sander. I've used this sander here, the sanding block sort of, and that's been pretty helpful. Um, I took, this is just a tiny little edge sander that I have. I took that and used it to try to make things a little more detailed in here. And then I remembered that not long ago I went to Harbor Freight and they had these oscillating tools here on sale, so I thought I'd buy one. I'm going to try to figure out how to put this together and I will get back to you. So I put the oscillating tool together. Um, you can see you change the head by using a hex key they give you and kind of screwing it in there and changing the head, replacing the heads. Oh, there's Frida. Hey, Frida. Um, I'm going to put an 80 grit. You see it's got the number on the back. It's kind of Velcro-y. What's cool about this is that it has, uh, you can speed it up or slow it down on here. The detail sander I was using, using only had one speed. Made it a little difficult when I wanted to slow down in the cracks here. but. I'll try this for just a second, show you how it works, and then I'll get at it. So just turn it on. This is the door after it's been sanded down uh, and filled. I'm going to paint and prime it, but I'm going to go ahead and do a second video. Oh, there's Diego. <laughs> hey, bud. Looking at it, the hardware is looking pretty crappy too, so I'll probably replace, not replace, repair <laughs> that to uh, <sighs> So I hope you find this video helpful. So I hope you find this video <clears throat> notification bell for uh, notifications any <laughs> well, I hope you find the video to be helpful please if so <laughs> hey everybody thanks for stopping by I am going to replace <laughs> hey everybody thanks for stopping by today I'm going to repair the you'll be notified when those other videos are posted. Um, 